Hi, everyone. I'd like to start by acknowledging my teachers. Um, one of my, my main teacher actually might be here tonight. I can't see if she is or not. Susan O'Connell, she's a uh, Zen priest at the San Francisco Zen Center. So I just want to acknowledge her and, and all of my other teachers who have helped me to become the person I am and brought me to this stage. I'd like to start by asking you to practice with me. We're going to be talking about uncertainty and discomfort, but I'd like this to be a practice. And so to start, place your hand over your heart. And notice what sensations you can feel there. Allow yourself to wonder and stay with those sensations. Ask yourself, what would it be like to walk around this weekend with an open heart? Allow yourself to be vulnerable to the beautiful human beings near you. What would it be like to connect to them? Ask yourself, what would it be like to leave your phone off and stay present to the current moment? Not shut yourself off from the people around you to the experience that's here in this moment. So as I ask these questions, see, if, see what you notice there in your chest, what sensations come up. What would it be like to not use your phone for a week? What would it be like to shut everything off for a week, all the distractions, and allow yourself to write that book that you've always wanted to write, launch that business you've always wanted to launch? What would it be like to be up here on this stage and bury your soul to the world? Allow yourself to get into that shaky place, full of fear, excitement, and joy. What would it be like to walk around open-hearted to the world, to push yourself into that place of discomfort, allow yourself to meet your deepest desires, and push into your deepest fears? So you, could, you can Take your hand off your heart if you want. But I would ask you to keep practicing with that. Just notice those sensations as I talk, as we go on this adventure together for the next 14 minutes and 50 seconds. <laughs> um, practice and allow yourself to notice the sensations in this space together. Let's see if my clicker is working now. <laughs> it is. Uh, wonder what it would be like to put yourself in this place of loving uncertainty. So working with uncertainty and discomfort and the mindfulness of that has become a big part of my life's work. And I'm going to tell you the story of that, but I want you to keep practicing as I tell you that. So the story goes, there was a man who lived on a tropical island. And he, it was a beautiful island, but he was stuck in life. He was overweight. He was addicted to junk food. He was sedentary. He was a smoker and couldn't quit smoking despite trying and failing seven times. He was deeply in debt. He was a procrastinator. He was stuck in a job that he was not happy with. He um, kept putting off his dreams. He was, his life was filled with clutter, and he didn't have time for his lovely family. So does anyone here relate to any part of that story? Raise your hand, even just a part of it. Yeah, I think a lot of us can relate to at least a, a bit of that story. Maybe see some of that in yourself or maybe some place that you've overcome in the past. 
One of the most difficult things about this young man on this tropical island was that he didn't believe in himself. And that held him back because he, he wanted to make all these changes in his life. He wasn't happy with all of that, but he couldn't stick to any of those changes because he didn't have that belief that he could do it. So he decided to finally start to do something about it and make one change and just take one step towards one change. And so he poured himself into just one of those changes on his long list of things that he wanted to do. And that change was to quit smoking, which he chose because he didn't realize that was one of the hardest things on his list. So he uh, poured in himself entirely into it. He promised his wife and his young daughter that he was going to make this change. And he, that promise really meant a lot to him. So he did everything that he could, a thousand things, and some of those things actually worked. And that was a revelation to him. Some of those things actually worked. So he started to do those same things with all the other habits. He started running. And even though he couldn't run even 10 minutes at first, he was out of breath five minutes into his, his run, he continued to do it. And after a year, he ran his first marathon. He started to eat healthier, became a vegetarian, eventually a vegan, and lost up to 60, 70 pounds after a couple of years. He started to get out of debt and slowly started to climb out of that hole where uh, it was just a horrible financial place for him, but he and his wife started to change their, everything about their financial habits. He started to, well, he stopped procrastinating as much. He started to write and wrote a blog, wrote a book, and actually eventually a number of books, launched a business, quit his day job. His entire life changed. And it was an overwhelming success. He started to believe in himself, and that was one of the biggest changes that happened. And one of the biggest things that he learned was that the discomfort and uncertainty that he had been running from, because all of those problems that he had in his life was uncertainty and discomfort, those places were the places that he actually wanted to be. When he started pushing himself into those places, his entire life changed. Every time he did that, he had some success. And so today he is out of debt and in a much better financial place. He's got his own business. He's got time for his wife and kids. He's healthier. He's happier. He practices mindfulness. I think you guys can guess that uh, I'm that handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from the tropical island. I, I, uh, I came from the tropical island of Guam and we moved out here with our family, my wife and our, ready for it, six kids. Gasp! Um, <laughs> uh, uh, let's see, eight years ago. And so, yeah, things have been a lot better, but one of the things that, that you might learn from that story, besides I have a crap load of kids, is <laughs> that, and they're wonderful kids, by the way. The human mind doesn't like, doesn't like uncertainty and discomfort. I'm not good with these clickers. <laughs> the human mind doesn't like uncertainty or discomfort. Every time that you procrastinate, every time you run to distraction, every time you open your phone to check on things real quick, you are running from uncertainty and discomfort. It, our minds just don't like that shaky, shakiness under us, which is the basic foundation of life. Every day we have to wonder whether we are good enough, whether we're going to be okay, how people will judge us. And so we run from that in some way. We have three, three main responses to uncertainty and discomfort. These are things that there's lots of variations on them, and there's, there, there, there are other ones, but these are some of the main ones. The first one is running and avoidance. Procrastination. Anyone here procrastinate once in a while? Maybe a few of you. Man, actually, a lot of people didn't raise their hand. That's amazing. Um, I'm very impressed. This is an amazing crowd, then. 
But most of us run at some point during the day. We run to Facebook and Twitter, Reddit, whatever your favorite social media is, Instagram. We run because we are avoiding something. So that's, that's one of the main ones. Elimination and control. Does anyone here you know, make to-do lists, have systems, have routines, a few of you guys? So there is nothing wrong with that. We all want systems, we all want routines, but that is a form of control. And that's great. But at the end of the day, we actually don't control everything um, in our lives. And so um, that's another way of dealing with it. Lashing out and resentment. Uh, whenever we lash out in anger and frustration and fear, even criticizing ourselves, that's a form of lashing out of resentment. It's also a form of control. So these are our, our three main responses, and it turns out these aren't necessarily the best strategies. Um, they result in a number of, basically all of our, our main problems in life. Procrastination, putting off exercise and meditation and other good habits like that, overeating, running to comfort foods is one way of dealing with the uncertainty of our lives. Distraction, as I mentioned. Busyness, just rushing around and being completely busy all the time. Clutter, uh, we had one of the world's foremost experts on clutter. The, the root cause of clutter is distraction, I mean, is uncertainty and discomfort. And then financial problems. Um, and, and many more, actually. So these are, these are some of the results of what we, our strategies. And so the secret here is that this is based on a very limited view of life. And it's a view that we're all very familiar with because it's the view that we mostly have as we walk around the day, as we walk around the world, we are in a self-centered view. And it's nothing wrong with that. That's just a natural way of looking at life, is that we are the center of the universe. And so we're walking around, and we are worried about our own desires. We're worried about the things we don't like, our discomforts. We're worried about the uncertainty of being us. But it's a limited view, because we are the center of everything, and we, it's a, a, a narrow, closed-in view. So. Running from uncertainty comes from a limited view of life. It's also a limitation that we place on ourselves. We are putting that on ourselves. And when we do that, when we run to distraction, when we procrastinate, when we lash out, we are actually hurting ourselves. We are keeping ourselves from connecting to life, from being fully present, from opening our hearts to the beautiful people around us from doing the things that we really want to do in our lives. And so it's a limitation. I'm going to give you guys the good news. <laughs> I've given you bad news so far. There are some amazing rewards to uncertainty and discomfort. I'm going to give you six of them. Then there's many of them. The first one is uncertainty allows for surprise and delight, for playfulness and adventure. We actually want uncertainty in our lives, even though we run from it. Imagine if life were completely certain all the time. We would be bored with that. There would be no room for any kind of newness, any kind of freshness, any kind of play, any kind of uncertain adventure where we don't know the outcome. And we can see this when we, you know, we love, all love a good story. We all love a good film. If we knew how it was going to turn out, if there, we had certainty about that, there'd be no fun in that, right? So we all, a, a good story needs uncertainty. The second is uncertainty and discomfort are the space for creativity. Are there any creators in here? All right, if, wow. Some amazing people in here. This is my tribe. Um, we all, every writer or other creator knows what it's like to stare at the blank page, and then suddenly discover you need to go do your dishes. <laughs> we run from the blank page. We run from the uncertainty of whether we can do it and of how the world will judge us, of whether we're going to fail or not. And yet, that space is exactly the space for creation, that space of not knowing, of having to put yourself 
in this place where you have to discover something new about yourself and about life. That space of finding a new way of seeing things or combining old things in a new, fresh way. This is exactly where we want to be when we create, and it's a beautiful space. Uncertainty and discomfort are the price of admission for the most meaningful experiences of our lives. A few years back, I ran an ultramarathon for the first time, 50-mile ultramarathon, um, first and only time. <laughs> I, uh, it was one of the hardest things I did in my life, and I was invited to do it by one of my best friends. His name was Scott Dinsmore. He said, fan, yeah. He's a creator of a blog called Live Your Legend. Scott invited me to do this with him. I joyfully accepted. We trained for months, running through the beautiful hills of the Marin Headlands. It's a great time. The day of the ultramarathon comes. We got up 4 in the morning, start, start running. I felt amazing. And I did an amazing job until about uh, 35 miles in. <laughs> Got an injury. Um, Scott didn't let me down. We crossed the finish line together, sprinting with, you know, smiles on our faces. It was one of the most meaningful things that I, I did. Scott, unfortunately, passed away about a year later, uh, top of Mount Kilimanjaro. And... Um, that was one of the most meaningful experiences of my life. I'm so glad that I took his invitation because it, it, it was meaningful because of the discomfort. It was meaningful because we did it together and helped each other through it. It creates a space for connection to each other and for interconnection. Uh, without opening our hearts to each other, without that scariness of that vulnerability, we can't connect and realize our interconnection to others. Creates room for wonder, for that space of genuine curiosity, of not knowing what life is, is going to bring us, and being in awe of it. It's a space for the most meaningful growth in our lives. You can't be an entrepreneur without uncertainty. You can't run an ultramarathon without discomfort. You can't be a teacher, a parent, a yogi, a Zen student, without both of these things. So I'm going to give you, leave you with a practice. My time is up. The practice is to put yourself in the beautiful practice space of uncertainty and discomfort. I gave, came up with an acronym, Northwest Cola. Memorable and beautiful. Um, notice what's going on. Welcome the sensations in there. Be curious, open yourself from your narrow view, feel love and interconnection in the middle of that space, and then go out and act with intention and devotion. Put yourself in this beautiful practice ground every day with gratitude savoring the deliciousness of the groundlessness. Thank you.